Daniel here for Tabletop for One. Please join me at the table as I play through the Guild of Merchant Explorers. And I thank you for joining me for the solo playthrough of the Guild of Merchant Explorers. This is designed by Matthew Dunstan and Brett Gilberts, and it's published by AEG. I bought this recently at my local game store. Been looking forward to doing this playthrough for you. I've played it multiple times, uh, mostly on the beginner map, and uh, today, tonight we're going to be doing the Aghan map. But let me go ahead and show you how to set it up. So you'll set your map board here and, and maybe the action board here. It's going to be off the screen during the game because you don't need to see that. I have my own metal coins here, but you can just set a stack of the regular coins here. And then you'll have all your tokens of one color. You'll need four monuments and then a bunch of treasure chests and a bunch of the trading post tokens here. And then up here you'll have some treasure chest cards as well as the advanced action cards. The investigation cards you'll have that whole stack you just shuffle them up and have them ready there and then you're going to take the six uh, objective cards for this map you're going to shuffle them up and you're going to draw three of them and then i'll set them up here and this will be the first objective second objective and third objective and so you're going to set up these tokens here like so with the two here the three the other three the multi-era one and the other multi-era one here. In the solo mode of this game, you have to complete all three objectives by the end of the game. As we go, these objectives, the bonuses, the 10 money or five money will get blocked off by these tokens when the cards that represent these cards get revealed. And I'll explain that as we go. And then you're gonna take the basic action cards. The basic action cards are these five cards here. And then you're going to shuffle them together along with the number one era card. These are your basic explorer actions. They just get shuffled up. And then you're going to set them, you know, wherever you'd like. But I'm going to set mine up here. Now this board over here is meant to track your actions. So you know which actions you've taken and which ones are left in your deck of actions. Again, I'm going to keep this off the board during the playthrough. Uh, but you can use this to track your actions. It's very helpful if you're not good with memorizing what you've done so far or you don't want to look through the stack of cards. All right, in the Guild of Merchant Explorers, you're going to be drawing from your action deck, doing the action it shows, and then placing cubes for that action on the board. There are various objectives across the board that you want to try and accomplish. You first have to start from the center of the board, the capital, and work your way out. But as you go, you'll be able to build villages from which you can explore in later rounds. You can also build trading posts between two cities. These uh, numbered tiles here are, those are city spaces. And so you can build trading posts which score you a lot of coins. These ruin spaces here, these gray spaces, they represent ruins. And when you place a token on them, you'll explore them and draw a treasure from the treasure cards. The treasure cards provide a lot of the different abilities. And so this one here is a set collection. So at the end of the game, if you have three of these urns, then you're gonna gain nine coins there. This next one here is just straight up gain two coins right away. This one lets you place an exploration cube down right away. And then some of these other ones give you points based on, like this one is how many villages you have in mountain regions. And so you get a coin for each of those. Some of them are for monuments and others. These investigative cards, you're gonna earn these every time one of the era cards shows up. So the first era card, when that shows up, you'll draw two of these, you'll gain one of them, and then in future rounds, every time the era one card shows up, you'll do that action. It'll be right here, and you'll do that action. It kind of builds an engine for your exploration. Same goes for the two and the three. And then the multi-use card, this one here, when this turns up in the deck, you'll actually get to choose one of the three actions that you have to use for this card. And so as you explore the map, you're also gonna try and explore some of these monuments. When you reach a monument, a monument is a wild space, so you can use any action for any terrain to go to that space as long as you have led a path there from a village or from the center of the map. And instead of placing an exploration token, you're gonna place a monument there and that'll go in that spot. 
and then you'll gain points at the bottom here based on how many or uh, which monument that is it's your if it's your first one you'll gain six if it's the second eight then ten then fourteen as for villages these little tokens here the way they work is when you explore let's say i explored in the grasslands here and worked my way and then i explored the last spot in this group of grasslands the all these ones adjacent to each other at that point i can take any one of these cubes here let's say i take that one and place a village there and then at the end of the round, when you clear the cubes, the villages stay. So the next round, I can explore from this village or from the center of the map or any other village I've built. So you, you want to try and push out and cover uh, whole regions like the mountains here, the sands here, the water you'll never have a village on. But those are the things that you want to do. And in building out trade posts, let's say I had explored along here. And I made my way to this first trade post here. It's a level two trade post. And then I worked my way this way up towards the corner here. And I landed on this other level two trade post. At this time, I've connected two cities together with a path. And then I can build a trade post at one of the cities. And so I've got to decide which one. And if, you know, let's say I decided the sands one there, I'll place the sands token underneath and put my token back on it for this round. And then you take the value of that city and multiply it by the value of the city that you connected to it to make that trade post, and you'll get a value of coins. So two times two being four is what I would get for that trade post. Now, any uh, future connections between this trade post and any other city will not cause another trade post to be built. So if I wanted to build one here, I would then have to connect it to another city. So let's say I connected it to this one and then I would be able to place a trade post there and that would be two times three, giving me six coins. And so the other thing that you need to know on the map is that there's coins all over the place. Anytime you place an exploration token down on those coins, you get those coins. There are some cards that give you bonuses for those coins, so you got to keep that in mind. Uh, but they usually show up in this deck here. And so at this point, let's talk about the scenarios here that we got to complete. The first one is discover a village adjacent to a discovery tower. So these four spots here are the discovery towers. So I have to build a village next to it. So this one has no land next to it, only water. And so I can't build a village at this one. So I'm gonna have to work my way towards this one, this one, or this one and build a village. That means I have to fill up the region next to it. So these four grasslands here, or these five sands here, or these five mountains here. So I think that one might be the easiest, but this one has a really nice city. So if I, if I work my way that way, that might be worth it. Chances are I'm not gonna get it in the first era. And so we'll move on to this next objective here. And it says place trading posts on grassland, desert and mountain spaces. So like that illustration I showed earlier, I had built one in the sands and one in the grasslands. Then I would need to build one more in the mountains somewhere. So there's one here and one here. So we'll have to try and connect those cities. And then lastly, it says discover two villages on mountain spaces. So with that in mind, I might want to work towards building a village over here in this spot. But we'll see. That's It's a five mountain region and that's kind of hard to build. Also... A village can only be built on an empty space. So keep that in mind. The ones with coins and the cities, they cannot have a village on them. All right, so as we go, we're going to go through four eras total. The first era is pretty quick. The second era, we'll add the second era card in. And when that second era card shows up, then this token goes right here and covers up that reward. I will not be able to get that reward, but I still have to complete the objective. If the third one shows up, then that happens and so on. So if you want to maximize your points, you really have to try and complete these objectives in a timely manner. Like I said, this one's gonna be a little difficult, but we're gonna give it a shot. And so the first action of the round is going to be place one in a mountain space. And so I really only have two options here. Again, I have to start in the center. So the only two mountain spaces are here and here, and I just have to decide which one I wanna do. And I guess I'll go ahead and do this mountain space here. And then the next action is gonna be two in the sands area. Now, this one here, 
doesn't show these uh, sand hexagons adjacent to each other. So it's two different sands areas or two adjacent ones, any two that you're connected to. So in this case here, I think I'm gonna place one there and one there. All right, and the next action of the game is we have our first era card. So we draw two of the investigation cards and we'll turn them over here and I'll show you what we have. And so we have this one here, which says explore one grassland sp space and then explore up to five spaces adjacent to this grassland space. So you just do it in that pattern there. It doesn't matter those, those five spaces. It doesn't matter what they are. You just get to explore them. And then this one here says explore up to four spaces within a single region. That's really useful for covering a whole region. And I think that's the one I'm gonna take. So we place it right there. And the other one, we're just gonna discard to the bottom of the deck here. And then you go ahead and perform that action since the first era card was drawn. And so we'll place four. And so I think my best option at this point is either to explore these four grasslands here to build a village or explore these four here. It's really tough. I, I think I'll go ahead and do this here. So. Notice I'm covering up a coin, so I'm gonna gain a coin for that, and then I make it to a city. And hopefully I can connect to the city in a few minutes. All right, we're gonna draw the next action here, and it's two of any adjacent spaces. Okay, now that's really useful for me because I used my one mountain cart earlier and I don't have any mountains, so if I go right here and here, I connect those two towns. Now first I gain a coin, from covering up that coin space. And then I have to decide which of these two towns I want to make a trade post. I'll go ahead and make the sands a trade post there. And that's gonna cover that up. And then I'll multiply that by that. And I'm gonna get another six coins added to my total. All right, then we move on to our next card and it's three water in a straight line. And I think I'll go ahead and get this one here. We'll go one, two, and three. And now I've covered up a ruin. We've explored that ruin. So we're gonna add a treasure token here, place my token back on top. And then we're gonna draw one from the treasure deck and let's see what we got. All right, we got one of those uh, urns or vases. So we'll set that aside for scoring later. All right, we should really be careful here. I want to get a village before this round ends. And this is the last action card. Let's flip it over and see. And it is two grasslands and they don't have to be adjacent. And so, ooh. I could put one here at the city. See, the capital still counts as part of that trail of adjacency. So if I place this one here, then I could turn this one into a trading post. So we'll definitely place one there. And then we'll place the other one here. And that completes this grasslands region. Now I have five in the grasslands region. And I'm gonna turn this one here into a village. And when you get a village, you'll score based on the era here. If it's the first era, you'll get one coin. If it's the fourth era, you'll get four coins. And so I'll gain one coin for the village, but then we're gonna go ahead and multiply. We have two times three, making six. And so we're definitely getting a lot of points this round. And then I gotta choose which one to turn into a trading post. I'll turn this one into a trading post. And at this point, the round ends. So all you do is you take off all the cubes. This can be a little bit on the fiddly side, but I just go for the ones that aren't sitting on tokens first. And then I take the ones off the tokens and that makes it easiest. You just have to look out for moving the villages. And then you're gonna take your deck of action cards you're gonna add on the level two era now or the, whatever the next era is. And then you're gonna shuffle these back up and then we're gonna start, whoa. <laughs> and then we're gonna start a new round. And as a reminder, now I can start my exploration from this base here. And so that's gonna get me closer to this uh, discovery tower. Although I do need to build villages on mountain spaces. So I, I have to work on that. But since I'm this close to this discovery tower, I'm gonna try and build a village right about here. And so our first card is gonna be two any adjacent uh, hexes here. And so, you know, I think I'm just gonna go ahead and do these two here and explore for that treasure there. And so we'll place a token there and gain a treasure card. And it's two more coins. All right, and the next card here is gonna be, oh, our level two, that's both good and bad. So first of all, we have to move this token right here. You have to do that before you do your action, so keep that in mind. And then we're gonna go ahead and draw for a new investigation card. 
And let's see. All right. So we have explore one desert space and then three other spaces in a row. Or explore up to four sea spaces. Draw an additional treasure card for each rune space you explore this turn. Ooh. That's really tempting. The only problem is, is right now with this one here, I don't, I don't think I can reach a ruined space right now. And so it's not very advantageous for me to take this one. So I think I'll just go ahead and take this one. And so now I have to explore a desert space and three spaces in a straight line from that. That's going to be the tricky part. You know what? Maybe I'll go right here and go straight down. So I'll go one there, there. And then there and there. Now I covered up four coins, so that's gonna get me four points right away. All right, and the next action is gonna be two sands. Well, I might as well go right here. That'll gain me a coin, but then I can turn this one into a village since I, I have enough, I, I covered the entire region there. And so I'll get one coin for covering and then two coins here for a level two village or an era two village. And then the next card here is going to be our era one card. And so I get to explore four spaces within a single region. Well, check that out. This is what we wanted to do. So we'll go one, two, three, and four. I covered up two coins. And on top of that, I get a village here. So let's go ahead and put the village right there. That'll give me two more coins. All right. And so the next turn here, we have two grasslands. And so I think I'll just place them here. That'll get me one more coin. And then the next card here is going to be one mountain. And I think the best thing for me here is to get the two coins from that spot. And I'm going to go ahead and exchange these coins here. All right. And then the last option here is three water in a row. And I really didn't plan my exploration out very well because it doesn't matter where I put these at the, mo at the moment because I can't reach a ruin. Like I can't reach this one here because it's not in a straight line from this water space here. So I don't even need to place these because we're at the end of the round. And so I'll go ahead and reset the board. You know what? Before I finish resetting the board, I just realized something with that water card. So this is a good uh, rules teach moment. So when discovering a discovery tower, you can use any explore card for that. That includes this one here. And so we'll actually go ahead and place that discovery tower there. I hope that you don't consider that too much of a take back, but I, I, I just wanted to illustrate that that can be useful in that moment. So we get a discovery tower there. That's going to award us six points for that. And on top of that, then we complete that objective, which will get us another five points. So we get a total of 11 coins from that action. Sorry about that, but I hope that gives you an idea of how you can use cards when it doesn't feel like you have anything good for them. All right, so I'm gonna take the deck now and then we're gonna go ahead and add the level three in there. Shuffle this up and start again. All right, and then the first action is gonna be two sands. And I think I'll go right here coming from my capital. I'll gain one coin out of that. That gives me a little more access to this side of the map. And then the next card here is three water. Well, with that in mind, I'll explore this ruin here, and then this one, and this one. That's three in a line. And so this one's going to get a treasure token. And then we'll go ahead and claim our treasure here, and let's see what we got. And we got place an exploration token. And so I think I'm going to go ahead and place one right here on the water. I think that's going to give me the best advantage at this point. And then the next card here is the level three objective card. All right, so now this goes up here and this one up here. I didn't complete this in time. That's really gonna hurt me. But I do get to choose a new action card here. And so we have explore up to four desert spaces and triple the value of any coins earned from these spaces or explore any number of connected grassland, desert and mountain spaces in a straight line. Hmm. That's really difficult. I do like the Sands one. Not for the coins, just for the opportunities it affords me. Because I really could go up here and get right next to that tower and the ruins there. And it'll connect another town. Oh, that's tough. You know what? Let's go ahead and do that. We'll do that one. Maybe that's not the right call, but <laughs> we'll see. Now let's go ahead and do that action. So we're going to explore... And go one, two, three, four, and it'll get us two coins out of that placement. And then the next card here is going to be <laughs> the era one card. And so I'm looking at what I need to do is I need to discover two villages on mountain spaces. So I'm thinking I'm going to go ahead and use that for this whole mountain region here. 
We'll go one, two, three. I get a coin for that, but I'll go ahead and put my village on the last space. So the coin plus the three coins from the village is gonna give me a total of four. And then we'll go on to the next one here and we have one mountain space. And I think I'll go ahead and use that for the discovery tower. Actually, we'll put a tower there instead. That's the second tower I've, can, I've made and it's gonna give me eight points. So that's, that's a good move, I think. And the next card here is gonna be two adjacent tiles here. And so I think it'll go one and then two here. And I've connected this city to this city here. So it's a two times three. So that's gonna give me six coins for sure. And then I'll turn this one into the trading post here because I'm gonna try and connect this one to this place here. I think I can do that. And then the next card here is the level two era card. And that's exactly what I needed to do that. Cause now we're gonna go one desert space there and then three in a straight line. Let's go one, two, and three. I get one coin for that placement. And then we're gonna connect these two cities here and that's gonna get another eight coins. We'll turn this one into a mountain. So let's see, I'm at nine coins now. Then we've completed this one here. This says place trading posts in mountains, grasslands, and deserts. So we have the de uh, grasslands, deserts, now mountains. So that's another five. So we're at 14 points. And on top of that, it looks like I made a village spot here. And so that's going to get another three points. And so 17 coins out of that one move. Wow. That was definitely worth it. Of course, we needed it because... We need to complete those objectives. We have one more ear to complete that last objective or else we're gonna lose the game. And so the last card here says that we just need to go to two different grasslands. And so we're gonna put one here, giving me two coins. And then we're gonna put one here on this town, connecting it to this one. So it'll be two times two, which will be another four. So I get six coins total for that placement. And then I get to choose which one of these will become a trading post. It'll probably be that one. And so we're at the end of the round and I'll go ahead and reset the board. And then we'll shuffle in this last era card here. Again, reminding you that that'll trigger covering up these objective bonuses, but also that card lets me choose one of the three extra investigative cards to use. And so we'll go ahead and flip over this card and we have that, that was the card. Well, that's not good because now these get covered up. And so the, at most I can get five coins out of this objective and I have to complete it anyways. I realized earlier I made an error on this card here. I didn't triple the coins I gained from this. You probably already noticed that. So I should have gained another four coins and I'll correct that now. And the reason why I'm noticing that now is because I'm gonna go ahead and utilize that ability to get a lot of coins. I'm gonna place one here, one here, one here, and I think one here at the town. So that was three coins times three, that's gonna be nine. And then the next card here says go to a mountain space. And I think we'll just go ahead and go to this town here because I plan on just covering this, actually we'll go to this town or this spot here. I plan on covering this completely. And the next one here is the level three again. And so I think I'll just do the ones by my, my city here That'll gain me only three coins from that, but I get to turn one of these into a village and that'll be another four coins. So we'll just turn this one into a village and then I'll gain seven coins out of that placement. All right, and the next card here is gonna be uh, the level one era card. And that's the one I need for right here. And so that one is going to allow me to complete this mountain range. I'm gonna gain four coins from the placement as well as a village for four more coins. And so that's gonna be another eight coins total. And so I did complete this objective here, discover two village on mountain spaces. I have one here and now one here, and that's gonna gain me five coins. So we've completed all three objectives. So all we wanna do is score a lot of points at the end here. And so we'll go ahead and turn this one over. And this is the level two era card, which lets me place one in the sands and three following it. And I think I'll place it right here. The, the, is not gonna use up all those spaces. It's always up to, but that will get me a treasure card and maybe I'll get a vase out of this or a couple coins. And actually we get um, coins per discovery tower at the end of the game. Well, that's helpful. I plan on trying to get this last discovery tower. We'll see what happens. And then I do get one coin from that placement. And then the next card here is gonna be two grasslands. 
I think I'll go ahead and place them right here in hopes that I can complete this grassland section and gain another village. So I'll gain one coin out of that. And then the next card here is two adjacent tiles. And so I think I'll go ahead and place them here trying to get to that discovery tower. That's going to get us a lot of points. 10 coins plus a bonus one at the end. And the next card here is two sands. And I think I'll just use that to place the discovery tower for one of them and then one coin here. So that'll give me 11 coins total for that placement, which again, isn't too bad. And then we're on to our final card. And I think this is the water card. Yep, that it is. It's three in a row. So let's go ahead and place them and head towards this final treasure here. And we'll get a treasure card for that. And that will be, oh, nice. Nice, that'll be more points for discovery towers. All right, and so at this point, you just add in any of the stuff that you earned here. And so I get two coins per discovery tower. I forgot to place that one, like the token there. So we have one, two, three, that's gonna be six points. And then I only have one urn or vase here. So we're just gonna get one point. So that's seven points. All right, so I ran out of gold coins, which means I have a stack of $100 right there. Plus we got 10, 20, 30, looks like 39. And so it looks like I went ahead and beat the normal difficulty. You can set this difficulty ahead of time or just try and beat the, the hard difficulty. That's kind of generally what I do all the time. But uh, we fit right there in the middle between those two at 130, was 139 points. And so there you have it. That was the solo playthrough and tutorial for the Guild of Merchant Explorers. Please let me know in the comments below what you think of the game and ask me any questions you'd like. Also point out any rules errors I might have made. Please also like and subscribe to this channel if you like the content you see here. And I thank you very much for watching Tabletop for One. Have a great night.